تابعونا عبر فضائيه النجاح برنامج فني بيحكي عن الالات الموسيقيه وعن تاريخ هاي الالات وصناعه هاي الالات راح اكون معاكم بالاعداد والتقديم اكرم زامل معكم تحلى سهرتنا تابعونا برنامج ميجنا بكل اسبوع رح نتناقش بموضوع معين موضوع رح يفيدكم ويفيدنا وكمان رح نستمتع فيه رح نقابل شخصيات واشخاص لديهم مواهب مختلفه رح نكون معكم انا واصدقائي في قضايا ومواضيع حلوه كونوا على الانتظار Another eventful week with me, Basil Qasim, and Amjad al broadcasting from An-Najah National University in Naples, Palestine. We start our broadcast today with the top stories of the week. John Kerry slams Israeli settlement expansion and proposed formalization bill. Fatah Congress elects Central Committee and Revolutionary Council members. President Abbas discusses latest developments with Uruguayan Foreign Minister. Abu Rudaini says Netanyahu's regional solution aims at inverting Arab peace initiative. Israeli minister calls Mr. Abbas number one enemy of Israel. And PDS forces security company G4S to end business deals with Israel. More than 40 members of Fatah 7 Congress elected on Saturday, 18 people for the Central Committee and 80 for the Revolutionary Council. Officials' results were announced during the closing session of the Congress held on Sunday evening at the Muqatta'a, the presidential headquarters in Ramallah. The results showed that six new members were added to the Central Committee, while 12 were re-elected. Outgoing members including Nabil Shaath, Nabil Abu Rudaine, Zakaria Al-Agha and Tayyib Abdul Rahim. President Mahmoud Abbas discussed Saturday with Uruguayan Foreign Minister Rodolfo Nin Novo the latest political development in Palestine as well as bilateral relations. Novo, on an official visit to Palestine and Israel, had earlier met with his Palestinian counterpart, Foreign Minister Riyad al Malki, where they also discussed a number of key issues of the Palestinian cause as well as regional and international issues of mutual concerns. In the meeting held in Ramallah, the two foreign ministers discussed ways to push the peace process forward and the Palestinian outlook toward the matter. Malki stressed that the Palestinian leadership has responded openly to all international initiatives providing anything that would help push the peace process forward based on the two-state solution. He briefed his Uruguayan counterpart on the Palestinian situation, including the Palestinian people's ongoing suffering due to the Israeli occupations and its settlers' practices. They further discussed the Palestinian prisoners' issues, the French Initiative Peace Conference Initiative, Israel's control over Palestinian natural resources, and the ongoing blockade on the Gaza Strip, along with other key issues. For his part, Novo affirmed his country's position in support of the Palestinian people's inalienable right to an independent Palestinian state based on the 1967 borders. He further affirmed his country's rejection of Israeli settlement construction. They also discussed the need to encourage investments between the two countries and ways to promote all mutual political, cultural, economic and trade relations. 
Nabil Abu Rudaini, spokesman for President Mahmoud Abbas, said on Monday that a call by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman for a regional solution to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict is an attempt to impose new preconditions and to invert the Arab Peace Initiative. He said in a statement that Israel's preconditions, including demands for a Jewish state or continuing with illegal settlement activities, are only an attempt to evade requirements of the peace process and to undermine international efforts to salvage the political process and the two-state solution. He added that two-state solution is in real danger due to Israeli practices and preconditions. Abu Dene said any talk on inverting the Arab Peace Initiative means free normalization with the Arab world without Israeli pullout from all the Palestinian territories, including East Jerusalem and the rest of the occupied Arab territories. The president spokesman said the Palestinian leadership considers such an attempt as a continuation of Israeli policies hostile to the two-state solution or to any other fair political process that would lead to the establishment of an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem and its holy places as its capital. United States Secretary of State John Kerry delivered harsh criticism of the Israeli government's settlement expansion policies at the Saban Forum in Washington, D.C. on Sunday, saying things are moving in the wrong direction regarding Israeli-Palestinian peace. Kerry began by expressing his genuine passion for the state of Israel as a place where people could be protected and an example to the world of democracy and freedom and rights and rule of law. However, Kerry harshly criticized Israel's controversial formalization bill that would see dozens of illegal Israeli outposts in the occupied West Bank retroactively legalized and thousands of donums of privately owned Palestinian land seized. The bill was scheduled to be voted on Monday by Israel's parliament, the Knesset. Kerry highlighted that every sitting American president, both Democrat and Republican, has been opposed to settlement building. Foreign Minister Riyad al-Malki on Monday received the credentials of the new representative of the Republic of Turkey to Palestine, Jorka Turkoglu. Malki welcomed the new ambassador and praised Turkish-Palestinian relations and support in international forums as well as its political and financial support. He further commended the position of the Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, which supports religious and holy sites, most importantly his position against the proposed Israeli ban on Muslim called for prayer. The new Turkish ambassador said he will work toward developing bilateral relations in all fields, a reflection of Turkish interest in seeing a strong Palestinian state and institutions. He said his country supports its Palestinian cause, national reconciliation and unity. Malki invited the Turkish president to visit Palestine and had a proposed meeting for the joint Palestine-Turkish committee. Israeli forces last night detained at least four Palestinians during raids in the West Bank districts of Ramallah and Hebron, according to the Palestinian President Society, PPS. PPS said Israeli army detained two Palestinians from Ramallah area and two others from Hebron district. Meanwhile, Israeli naval boats attacked Palestinian fishermen while sailing offshore Gaza City before they detained two of them. The Israeli Navy also seized the two fishermen's boat. The two and the boat were taken to nearby Ashdod Seaport in southern Israel. <music> Staff from Israeli municipality of West Jerusalem Tuesday demolished two Palestinian-owned homes in the East Jerusalem neighborhood of Silwan under the pretext of construction without a permit, according to local sources. They said municipality workers, accompanied by bulldozers, demolished the 300-square-meter building housing the residences of Saeed Abbasi and his brother. Abbasi had actually started to tear down the building on Saturday after the municipality had warned him and his brother that if they do not demolish it alone, the municipality would do that and make them pay exorbitant costs. Nonetheless, the municipality came there and demolished what was left of the building. The two homes were sheltered to 12 members of the Abbasi families. 
The municipality rarely gives building permits for Jerusalem's Palestinian residents, forcing many to build without a permit. Israeli settlers backed by soldiers raised Tuesday large areas of Palestinian-owned land east of Naples in the north of the West Bank, according to a local official, Ghassan Douglas who is in charge of the settlement's file in the Palestinian Authority. He said that settlers and soldiers raised 40 donums of agricultural land owned by Ahmed Nasser in the village of Jaloud. No reason was given for this act. He added that Israeli occupation forces had prevented citizens from cultivating the land, noting that no decision for seizing it was ever issued. According to medical sources, Israeli troops on Thursday shot and injured a Palestinian worker near the village of Norman, east of Bethlehem, while he was on his way to work in Jerusalem. Israeli soldiers reportedly opened fire at Musa Dababshi, 28, and injured him in the left foot. He was then handed over to the Palestinian Red Crescent, who transferred him to Beit Jala Hospital for treatment, where he was reported on stable condition. The Israeli Ministry of Transportation ordered that an Israeli bus company stop broadcasting announcements in Arabic in the city of Beersheba. A spokesperson for Dan Bus Company told Man News Agency. The spokesperson said that the company had been asked by the Israeli Ministry of Transportation to cease broadcasting announcements in Arabic on Tuesday, only four days after opening its new bus line in Beersheba. Palestinians with Israeli citizenship constitute 20% of the population of Israel and have long been targeted by discriminatory Israeli policies, whether through fewer resources allocated to Palestinian majority communities in Israel, divide and conquer tactics, attempts at and what have been denounced as policies of Judaization at the expense of other religious communities. The bus announcement ban also comes right as the Israeli Knesset is discussing a bill which would ban the use of loudspeakers to broadcast the Muslim call to prayer Adan from mosques in Israel. The Palestinian International Cooperation Agency, PICA, launched on Monday the first stage in its medical cooperation with Zimbabwe, according to a statement. Said the medical cooperation includes orthopedic surgery and children, chiropractic, and it comes as part of a program of solidarity through development in Africa and in cooperation with UNDP and the Islamic Development Bank. The one-year program was requested by the Zimbabwean Ministry of Health since uh, chiropractic treatment is not available in that southern African country. The program includes training Zimbabwean medics and medical students in these fields, said the statement and it was established by a presidential decree in 2016. It uses the Palestinian know-how in multiple sectors and aims to deliver a development and technical assistance to developing countries. <music> Israeli media reported that right-wing Israeli energy minister Yuval Steinitz called Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas the number one enemy of Israel on Thursday. Israeli media reported in an interview with Israel Radio, Steinitz reacted to a speech made by Abbas during the Fatih Party 7th Congress, during which the Palestinian head of state reiterated that he did not recognize Israel as a Jewish state, and that Palestinian recognition of Israel would not last forever, so long as Israel did not recognize a Palestinian state. Steinitz, a member of the right-wing Likud party and a close ally of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, echoed in his statement the Israeli government's stance that Palestinians' recognition of Israel's Jewish character is a prerequisite to any peace negotiations. The world's largest security company, G4S, announced last week that it is selling most of its Israeli business after an effective campaign against a company waged by the Palestinian-led Global Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions PDS movement for Palestinian rights caused its reputational damage, according to a PDS press statement. 
Rafif Ziade of PDS said we have succeeded to push one of the world's largest corporations into selling its key business in Israel. Our globally coordinated campaign has had a real impact. We will continue campaigning until G4S ends all involvement in violations of Palestinian human rights. The European Union made on Monday a contribution of 18.98 million euros to the payment of November salaries and pensions of 65,000 Palestinian civil servants and pensioners in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. This contribution, which is channeled through the Big Ass mechanism, is being funded by the European Union 14 million euros and Sweden 4.98 million euros. By this contribution, the EU has dispersed around 153 million euros this year to support the Palestinian Authority payment of salaries, pensions, social allowances and referral to East Jerusalem hospitals. An Egyptian court found three members of the Union of Egyptian Journalists guilty on Saturday of sheltering fugitives in the Union's offices. The Kasranil Nile Palace Court in Cairo sentenced the Union Speaker Yahya Kalash and other two Union board members to two years in prison. The three were found guilty of providing shelter for fugitives Amr Badr and Mahmoud Saka, who were arrested inside the Union's offices in Cairo where they had been avoiding court summons. The defendants were allowed to pay a court-assigned bail of 10,000 Egyptian pounds to suspend the court decision until lawyers appealed the decision. And over to you, Amjad, with Al Najah University News with Al Jinan Shah story. Yes, you are right. Jinan's story. And Najah keeps graduating, the cream of the crop, as always. Jinan Shah recognized as November Fellow of the Month, West Virginia. Jinan Shah Jabi, Doctor of Medicine, a first year endocrinology fellow, has been selected as the November 2016 Fellow of the Month, announced Pollitt winner, MD Vice Dean for Graduate Medical Education at the Marshall University John C. Edwards School of Medicine. Dr. Shah's nomination was regarding the quality of care she provided to a retired medical school staff member. Anytime you treat someone in the emergency department, it can be extremely stressful, Winner said. The patient highly praised Dr. Jabi for the thoroughness of the care she provided and her compassionate nature despite the stressful nature of the patient's emergency. Omolola Olajidi, MD Program Director of the Endocrinology Fellowship added that providing high-quality care for diabetes in an emergency situation can be very complex. The disease itself can have an impact on your entire body system and rapid evaluation and stabilization in the primary goal. To have a patient recognize a fellow for the level of care and compassion they received is an exciting moment for the program. Prior to beginning her fellowship in endocrinology, Sha'ar completed a three-year internal medicine residency at Marshall. As part of her recognition as a November Fellow of the Month, Sha'ar will receive items including certificate of recognition and a designated park spot. Sha'ar has an excellent academic history. She graduated from an Ajah School of Medicine in 2011 first in her class. Prior to that, she was among the top 10 Tawjihi students in Nablus with an average 98.5. Jinan is married to Dr. Ala Jabi, who is doing his cardiology fellowship after completing residency in internal medicine at Marshall University. The two young children have not stood in the face of the couple from achieving their goals and being among the best doctors in their hospital. On Wednesday, Mr. Samir Akru, coordinator of the People with Disability Care Office at Najah, participated in the 10th International Conference on the Role of Assistive Technology in Supporting Persons with Disabilities in Ramallah. Mr. Akru presented a research paper on environmental and technological harmonization for people with disabilities and Najah experience. Paper talked about Najah policies and regulations to guarantee integrating students with disabilities in campus life including academia, culture, sports, and social life. Akruk talked about the environmental harmonization 
where the university facilities such as elevators and bathrooms were harmonized for students with disabilities to create a positive behavioral change on campus. He also talked about the technological harmonization for facilities such as computers, laptops, computer labs for the visually impaired and others. He mentioned that the university offers scholarships to students with disabilities and those who have one or both disabled parents. He added that the university covers 50 to 75 percent of tuition fees for such categories. It is worth mentioning that the Najah National University was the first in Palestine to offer an integrated department to deal with students with disabilities in the year 2007 and 2008. And Najah currently works on developing an audiovisual lab to make the lives of students with disabilities more active and integrated with the society of the university. The film A Broken Wing, created by student Malik Ashour and Shahid Nassar, won the first prize in the 13th Documentary Films Festival organized by the Radio and Television Department and the Faculty of Economics and Social Sciences at the university and in cooperation with the Women's Studies Center on Monday. The event was held in Martyr Zafir al-Masri Auditorium in the old campus. Another film titled I'm Not a Sin ranked second, whereas Grains of Sand ranked third in the festival, which was the participation of nine documentary films prepared by students of the radio and television department at the university and who competed with each other to get one of the first three ranks. The opening ceremony was attended by Dr. Muhammad Amli, Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Saeed Kony, Dean of the Faculty of Economics and Social Sciences, and Ms. Samaweda, Director of the Center of Women's uh, for Studies, Dr. Hussam Ubdaye, Head of the Radio and Television Department, and a number of members of the academic and administrative bodies of the various media disciplines at the universities. In addition to a large number of interested mass media experts, for various local media and a crowd of media students at the university. In his opening remark, on behalf of the university administration, Dr. Amle pointed out that this festival acts as a springboard for students in real-life workplace. He also stressed that the infrastructure development of the Department of Radio and Television at the Najah University was one of the most important achievements of the university which aimed at supporting and developing the educational process for the students. At the end, Dr. Amle thanked all contributors in success of the festival and all the guests for their attendance. In the same vein, Dr. Kony expressed his happiness in the fact that every year creative students graduate from the media faculty at the university who then represent their university in various forums. He also thanked those who organized the festival and stressed the larger attendance that prove the importance of the event and its success. Over to you, Basil. You were watching NBC News. Thank you for being with us and goodbye.
نتهون أقوى الباقات نتهون مع بالتل الآن من بالتل تمتع بباقة نتفون 8 أو 16 بنفس السعر بس 30 شيكل في نتفون هناك وفي نت من الاتصالات للاشتراك اتصل على الرقم 199 مجانا من خط الهاتف أو زر أقرب معرض اتصالات أو من خلال تطبيق أنا بالتل أو شبكة موزعين المعتمدين بالتل غير بكرة